work at Berlin Partner, especially at the ICT department. But we are going to tell you a little bit more about that. And to make it more interesting, I brought a colleague as well. So, hi, Robin. Yeah, hi. Thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm just going to share my screen and then we're going to start right into it. Um, I also work at Berlin Partner um, as an uh, innovation manager in the Enterprise Europe Network. And um, yeah, I focus on the energy and environmental um, technology unit. So um, Enterprise Europe Network boosting the European startup ecosystem. So you've read a couple of um, words in our introduction um, on the website, on the event website. But um, what is the Enterprise Europe Network actually? Um, in fact, the Enterprise Europe Network is the world's largest support network for startups and SMEs with international ambition. So um, we have more than 3,000 local experts in over 600 locations in over 60 countries worldwide. So um, the way the Enterprise Europe Network, or in short, EEN, works is that is a network of intermediary organizations. So for example, um, chambers of um, commerce, chambers of industry, um, um, technology institutions, um, regional um, economic development agencies such as the, um, Bill and Partner, we all are interconnected in this enterprise Europe network. And then for example, if um, a startup from say Berlin um, wants to apply for a grant call and needs a partner in Spain, for example, in Sevilla, then uh, we can check with them over there, like at the uh, Chamber of Commerce in Sevilla, whether or not they have the right partner for you. So this is one potential application of how the EN works. And yeah, as I mentioned, it's um, we actually are active in the European Union, but also in the business cooperation centers worldwide. So for example, an important uh, startup hubs such as Israel and um, South Korea, for example, um, we are active there as well and can connect you with uh, players over there. We are active in 17 key sectors, um, which is very useful. So, for example, if you are a um, startup working in ICT industry as a post and services or maybe the creative industries um, and you need a partner in uh, Europe, then it's much easier for us to find the right partner because we can go into these sector groups, as they're called, and um, talk to the colleagues who are the experts um, in these specific sectors, and then they will um, have much better chance at finding the right partners for you. So, Mona, how does it work in Berlin? Okay, as Robin already pointed out, we are a European network, but based locally. So we are taking care of the building companies, but we also have partners in Brandenburg who are taking care of Brandenburg partners. Together we form a consortium, as it is most of the time, within European projects. We are going to tell you a little bit more about that later. But we have to apply for the Enterprise Europe Network as well to give you the advice over the COSMO program. So the three of us formed a consortium. We are the leader, Berlin Partner, taking care of the Berlin companies. And then we've got two partners from Brandenburg, the Wirtschaftsförderung Brandenburg, taking care of Brandenburg companies. And the third partner is the Chamber of Commerce and Industry, um, Frankfurt an der Oder, aus Brandenburg, but they are situated in Frankfurt an der Oder. So they are especially taking care of Polish topics as they are so close to the border. In case we've got any one of the participants who is not part of, or, or is not, uh, based in Berlin or Brandenburg, you can go to our website, you can see it on the bottom, en.ec.europe.eu. Go to the bottom of the page and you can see this logo, find your local contact point. And that's where you can check if uh, who is the partner in your region, if you need any advice on European public funding opportunities, or if you're looking for some partners on international level. So I would like to take the opportunity, as I do not know if all of you are familiar with Berlin Partner, as we said before, we are the regional business support agency in Berlin, and we are taking care of companies already based in Berlin or who are thinking about coming to Berlin. And we've got different services we can offer for them. It's five services, service packages, how we call them all together. First of it is the um, location package. That means you are looking for some office space or, or yeah, mostly office space. You can come to us and we can give you some advice on where you can find those office spaces or we can connect you with potential partners or potential and be done people who offer this space give you some information like bigger space smaller space whatsoever 
the second one is the business financing packages. That's where our colleagues come in and they can give you advice on regional, national or international funding opportunities. I and mean, we mostly talk about the international funding opportunities, but sometimes like the um, scholarship and uh, Mario talked about before, this is some information about regional level funding opportunities. So we can give you advice with this as well. The third one is our business talent package. Um, this is mostly about as I said, talent. They've got their own website, talent-berlin.de, where you can find some first-hand information when you're new to the city and want to get some information about this. And they also have got within this website um, some job offers, and it's free for every company to post their job offer over there. Um, what's also important about the business talent package is that they are working with the Chamber of Commerce and Industry and the Immigration Services. And this whole package is called Business Immigration Service, meaning that um, when you've got people working in your company who are not from the European Union and they need a working permit, you can come to us and we can help you to go through these documents and try to get this working permit as fast as possible. We do like a first hand check with all these documents necessary. The fourth package is called the innovation packages. That's where our colleagues from our clusters come in. Um, as some of you might know, we've got a joint innovation strategy together with Brandenburg, Berlin Brandenburg innovation strategy, where five clusters are defined. And within all of these clusters, there are some events going on where we connect the industry together with research institutes and universities. So we hope to connect them a little bit better and um, yeah, do they all go into innovative projects as well. The fifth package is the international package. Um, there we have got some joint booths from Bigger Fair Trades, where we can go under the roof of Berlin and Brandenburg. And there's also the Enterprise Europe Network situated. So the next slide, please. I can tell you just a short overview about what services we can offer. We're going to talk about those in more detail later on. The first one is access to funding. Um, mostly the innovative projects like Horizon 2020 or Horizon Europe. Um, we can identify if there are suitable calls for you. We can help you to write a proposal. We are not going to write the proposal for you, but if you have a proposal, we can have a check and see if there's a red line and if uh, what's our opinion about the proposal. No guarantee about that as well. So uh, The second one is the international partnerships. We can give you more information about this later. Those are Orkovich events, company missions, or we also have got a huge database where, database where all our EN colleagues are working with. The third one is called the EU Single Market Navigator, where, can, where, you, where we can give you some more information about uh, European laws and standards, also about market intelligence and some IPR expertise. Um, at this point, I have to say that we are not always the expert, experts in all of these fields but we know where you can um, get the information you need. So it's like a first door principle. You can come to us and we try to help you. If we don't know the answer, we can tell you who might answer us, who might, uh, if possible to answer your question. And all of our services, uh, as well as, yeah, all of our services are for free, not just the ones from the Enterprise Europe Network, but also the one from Berlin Partner, as we are funded by the State of Berlin and the European Commission. So. Yeah, now we're going to switch to um, yeah the first um, content uh, in terms of funding and international partnerships. So um, let's start with the Horizon program. Many of you may have heard of Horizon 2020, which is the main uh, framework program for research and innovation on the European level. However, starting next year, we're going to have Horizon Europe. So that's going to be the next framework program for the next six years. Um, this is what it looks like. Um, actually, I'm not going to bore you with all of the details, but focus on pillars two and three. So um, the Horizon Europe program just the other week, uh, they finally agreed on the budget, which is going to be around 85 billion euros. So that's what's going to be in here. Um, and pillar two. So you can see um, these different um topics so for example climate energy and mobility or digital industry and space health so that's the topics that the open calls are going to focus on so you can apply to those um you always need um the three out of three rule so you need to be 
um, at least three organizations from at least three different um, Horizon Europe participating states um, in order to apply. And this is like really big multi-million um, euro projects. And then in Pillar 3, we have two more programs that we're gonna um, provide some details on later on. So there's the European Innovation Council um, and the European Institute of Innovation and Technology. Um, I was just talking about the Pillar 2 and these big calls. Um, so obviously it's not as easy um, to get into these consortia that apply for these programs. Um, however, Mona has a solution on um, how to do it anyways. Okay, and the solution is, uh, it's called third party calls or cascade funding. Um, I don't know if you heard about it, so I'm, I'm going to explain to you a little bit about what this is all about. Within this pillar two, it doesn't matter if it was Horizon 2020 or it's going to be at Horizon Europe again as well. Um, there are these big calls Robin just talked about, mm, quite hard to get and not really targeted for startups and SMEs. So there's like, I give you an example about it. Uh, the European Commission, they opened up a call within these pillar two, and it was called Smart Anything Everywhere. They were looking for solutions about how to digitalize small and medium companies within Europe, innovative solutions. Uh, that's the number of the call, it's always long, but then a project consortia formed together, and uh, it was called DigiFed, and they actually were one of the winners for this open call, and they received 8.5 million funding, funding money from the European Commission for their idea. But then, within the proposal, uh, proposal, the European Commission already said, we give you a lot of money, but you have to take some of this money and give it to third party calls, to, uh, to third parties, and that's where they opened this third party calls. So they took like 3.9 million of their funding money and opened up new calls, especially for startups and SMEs. So next. So yes, as I said, uh, it's specially targeted at startups and SMEs. Um, so you know a little bit about the procedure. They have this big project, but it's all narrowed down to these third party calls, which are much easier to get for um, startups. Why well, should you apply for these startups? They are tailor-made for startups and scale-ups. So they are not looking for these big consortia. They are looking for smaller ones. You can't say in general what the application is going to be, but it's um, easier than applying for these bigger calls. It depends on what the project consortia said. Sometimes you can apply for it all by yourself. Sometimes you need one other partner, but it's all quite simple. And you don't just get the money from the funding, but you can also get a quite new network on international level, which makes it quite nice. And um, they give you some advice on market entry and whatsoever. So this is something we really, really like it because it's easier for the small companies. The application procedure, uh, as I said before, um, you can't say something about it in general because it always depends on the call. But altogether, altogether, it's easier than the bigger calls. Sometimes you just need to fill in five or ten pages. It's not easy, but easier to get. And the success, success rate is better than the bigger projects as well. It also depends on the project. Sometimes you've got like 20% who get the funding. Sometimes you've got 30% who get the funding. But altogether, it's quite okay. Right now, there are about, I don't know, 25 or 27 open calls. We put in the link as, uh, at this page. You can find it in the funding and tenders portal as well. But um, easy to get, so you can scroll, scroll uh, through them and see if there's a suitable one for you, or you can just approach us and we can check out together if there's something in it for you. All right. And um, yeah, we actually thought that um, having explained this cascade funding to you, it might make sense uh, to provide you with a couple of examples of um, ongoing calls. So I'm gonna start with the first one, which is called DigiFed. So that's the name you've heard on the slide before. Um, they fund what's called application experiment projects. So you received um, 55K um, in funding to carry out digital product or service demonstrators. Plus um, you get the technical support by major research centers and industrial um, companies that are um, integrated in this call. And the funding rate is 70% of eligible costs. 
So the targeted companies are, on the one hand, non-digital, so to speak, um, SMEs, startups, and mid-caps. They want to create a first product or service uh, demonstrator based on digital technologies. And on the other hand, um, SMEs, startups, and mid-caps that are already using digital technologies and that now want to integrate new digital technologies to increase their digital maturity. Um, there's more information on the call on this website and actually the one that's ongoing right now, the deadline is on 15th um, December. And if you are interested in this funding call, um, so definitely make sure to read the information that's available on the webpage. But then if you are interested, then uh, make sure to reach out to us as soon as possible because our colleague Jens um, is uh, by now quite an expert uh, with this call because he has already supported um, quite a couple of startups and SMEs with this program. Okay. Second open call we would like to point out to you is just to show you how broad the spectrum is. It's called SmartX and it's about smart textiles. Uh, the project Consortia, they um, opened up this new call, especially targeting the smart textile entrepreneurship um, by innovative cross-regional, cross-disciplinary and cross-cultural value chains. So you can get up to uh, 60,000 euro. Um, and within this acceleration program, but as I pointed out before, you can also get some support from the network partners. It's quite good. We've got a network partner here in Berlin, based in Berlin as well. It's called Sourcebook. And they are one of the partners within this um, SmartX project consortium. Also a good example about how small and medium enterprises actually can get into these bigger calls as well. So um, what they are looking for is projects with a TRL, that means technology readiness level, um, from about six to eight. That means you already have to uh, have to have a, a prototype or a demonstrator from your project. So it's not a research project they're looking for. It's already close to the market. And the project um, they the project they're looking for have to develop materials, components, products, or services clearly targeted at one or several of the following end markets: protection and sports, health and well-being, industrial applications in the manufacturing, transport, logistics energy, agriculture, buildings, or interior markets. So it's quite a broad spectrum. So if you're working within smart, tactile, smart textiles, have a look at the website and see if it's a suitable program for you. And as Robin well, pointed out before, you can always contact us in case you've got any questions. Then the third one we're going to present today is uh, called DigiCirc. Um, this one funds sustainable innovation for circular cities, blue economy, and bioeconomy. So um, it actually is three funding calls in one with different deadlines. And um, the first one that's currently open, um, it's called the call for circular cities and the deadline is on January 14th. So also um, quite soon, but as uh, Mona said earlier for these third party calls, um, the application procedure is much simpler. So um, you don't need as much time to prepare a proposal and it's still all feasible. Um, so this first call in circular cities, it has four challenges, autonomous cities, waste management, sustainable consumption and education. And um, it targets companies that are active in the sectors, buildings and construction, plastics, food, energy and water. So if you can somehow combine um, these sectors um, with um, one of the challenges, then you're eligible. However, you need to apply as a consortium of at least two startups or SMEs, um, but you can find partners via the um, website that they have. So they have this uh, partnering tool where you can register and say, hey, I'm interested in the funding call. And then you can check out who else is interested and match with them in order to um, create a consortium. But as the Enterprise Europe Network, we can also help you find a partner if you're interested. Um, the call is a 12 week long accelerator program and um, it aims to create a business strategy um, for the topic um, that you're focusing on. And you can receive up to 60,000 euros in equity free funding per startup SME. And the five best consortia at the end of the program um, can receive an additional 100,000 euros to advance toward the market introduction. So that's all about the third party programs and Mona's gonna continue with the EIC accelerator program. Okay, and just for your information, um, 
this is uh, the information I'm going to give you now. It's all within draft models right now. We don't have the final working program for the um, EIC accelerator right now. So this is to our best knowledge, the information I can give to you, but uh, it's not really 100% fixed yet. But we don't think that there will be big changes or anything because they had the European Innovation Council accelerator within the Horizon 2020 program, and they're going to have it again but with the, some changes within the Horizon Europe program. So this is pillar three now, as the one um, on the slide that Robin pointed out before. And it's just one program from the European Innovation Council, but it's called the Accelerator. And it's so interesting because it's especially targeting newly established companies, startups, SMEs, and a little bit small mid caps as well. But within their focus, startups, newly established companies and SMEs. And the funding scheme is really good because they are just looking for single applications. That means you do not have any, you do not need any partners. You can do some subcontracting if you're not able to, to um, do all the work by yourself, but there's no partner necessary. So you're not allowed to have any partners, but that makes the whole procedure to get the money a lot easier. Uh, what they are looking for is really deep tech projects, meaning that it has to be high risk. So you are not able to get uh, sufficient money on the market for your project idea. There still has to be a high risk. Um, within your application, you have to point out that there's a high growth potential. So a scalable business model and not just within your country or, country or your region, it has to be um, scalable on European level or even worldwide. And you have to find out in your application how you would like to do that. So your idea has to, be, has to have the potential to create new markets or disrupt the existing ones. And um, it's also different from the third party calls we pointed out before, because it's a bottom up program. That means you have an idea and you can apply for it. There's no um, topic defined within the open call as like in the DigiFed or the SmartX projects. So open to any fields of technology. Um, how much money can you get? That makes it such a great program as well. Um, you can get a grant component up to 2.5 million and the funding rate would be 70%. And as well as um, in the SmartX project as, that I pointed out before, the technology readiness level, the TRL, has to be from 5 to 6 to 8. That means there already has to be a demonstrator or a prototype or so on this level and you have to make the next steps to bring it on the market. So no research as well. It's one of those um, within your business, within your project idea, it's more at the end of the project than not at the beginning. So as I said, you can get 2.5 billion and the funding rate would be 70%. Plus you can get, uh, there's an, as an investment component as well for the activities that come really at the last step to bring your product to the market. It's equity or guarantee, and the minimum would be half a million, but you can also ask for up to 50 million. Within your application, they ask you if you are just going for the grant or if you're going for the grant and the equity. And we would always say go for the equity as well, because you want to bring your product to the market as well. And what's nice is that you can take the equity money as well to cover 30% you still need for the grant. So if you go for one a million within your project idea, you've got 70% um, that the European Union will give to you or the European Commission will give to you. And the rest 30%, perhaps you are able to, to you have the money, so you can just give it um, as, your, as your own money within the project as well. Or you can take the equity money you ask for as well. I, I hope I could make it clear, but this is, would be an option as well right now in the draft models. Uh, the exit would take place uh, seven to 10 years later. We do not have any experience right now because they just started this project about, I guess, last year, the accelerator. Um, so we don't know how it's going to work in a long time right now. They changed the procedure a little bit within Horizon 2020. It was a two-step procedure to apply for the accelerator. But as there are so many applications, they decided to go for three steps right now. But the first one is quite easy. It's a short application you need, and it's just a five page form, uh, a pitch deck and a video pitch. So quite easy to get. If you're lucky to go to the second round, you are able to fill in the full application. 
which means a full business plan, a set of milestones. Mm -hmm. But for this full application, you get three days of coaching as a support for the full application. We don't know how they are going to do it right now. Um, perhaps it's going to be a platform based on artif artificial intelligence, but um, nothing's too sure yet. They just say so in the draft models of the working program that you, there'll be some help available as well. And if you're lucky to go to the um, third round, this will be an interview taking place in Brussels. Hopefully um, not virtual. Right now they do it virtual, but um, I hope next year you can go there again and you have to pitch in front of the um, jury then. And right now I want to show you one of our best practices we have. There's a short video. You get um, first-hand information about a successful company from our region. So this was just a little bit to tell you how it can work out. Infarm is one of our best projects we got, and they received the EU grant, as I said in the video. Exactly. Um, so now uh, that we talked about the um, EIC, which is the third pillar of the Horizon Europe structure, we're going to stick in the third um, pillar. I'm going to talk about the European Institute of Innovation and Technology. So um, the mission of the, it's called EIT, um, is to create and find innovative solutions to major societal challenges. So what they do is they train a generation of um, entrepreneurs. So for example, by providing uh, master's programs or graduate programs um, or summer schools, um, and they also develop innovative products and services, and they focus really on uh, powering startups and scale-ups. So as you can see, the EIT is not actually one institution in and of itself, but it's multiple. So here you can see, um, for example, the Climate Kick, which might be familiar to um, some of you, or EIT in your energy. Um, and here's also, um, just to pick out one example, um, EIT Digital. Oh, what happened now? No, there was no link. Um, here we go. EIT Digital. 
And um, what all of these um, EITs have in common is they always have startup programs. So for example, um, incubator programs or accelerator programs and EIT Digital, for example, they have an accelerator and they focus on digital industry, digital cities, digital well-being, digital tech and digital finance. So that's the um, key sectors um, of startups they are interested in. And um, they have quite a couple of services. Um, so they actually focus on helping you raise capital and um, finding international customers. So we're talking about um, series A to B um, funding here. Um, they have this vast um, international network of um, corporate clients and also research institutions. Um, so if you um, are past this um, well, seed funding, um, then it definitely makes sense for you to look into um, the EIT programs um, because they really have um, quite some, some stuff to offer. And um, always make sure so um, you can definitely um, check the, the website of the EIT um, programs, but you can also ask us as the Enterprise Europe Network because we are connected to a lot of these EIT organizations. So if you're interested in having a first call with them just to um, see what other programs do I fit in there, um, definitely makes sense to reach out to us as well. Okay, are there any questions so far? Because we would go over to the third pillar from the service, uh, the second pillar the, uh, from the services the Enterprise Europe Network has to offer, international partnerships. But uh, in case you've got any questions about the access to funding, just tell us. Well, there, there are some questions in the Q&A section. I can just read out. Okay. Uh, do you have any idea where are they open the application for the EIC accelerator? We heard it can be at the end of the first quarter within the next year. Because we don't, they, um, like my uh, latest information is that the budget is now um, decided, but not, um, uh, nicht endgültig verabschiedet. It's not finalized yeah. yet. I think they are clear about the money, but there has to be some official commitment. So we hope to get it within this year. So they're still working, uh, working on the work program. And what they told us in an in information session we got last year, uh, last week was that it can be the end of the first quarter or beginning of the second quarter of 2021. Okay. And the second question, is a startup, a startup eligible for the EIC accelerator, even if they have an investor already? Yes, it depends on what kind of investor, I guess, because it, it has to be like um, you have to show in your application that it is still high risk. So you're not able to get uh, sufficient money on the market itself, but uh, it always depends on how much the investor brought in. If you've got like in the beginning of, of the project or in the beginning of starting a company, you've got in like friends and families who give you some money that would be totally okay. Even if there's a really early stage investor, as far as I know, it's going to be okay, but it doesn't have to be enough money to, to bring this project idea you're going to apply for on the market. This still has to be high risk. Okay, thank you, Mona. Okay. So just as an additional information, uh, so as Mona mentioned, there's still with some of these programs, there's some unclarity because um, this whole process um, took a while, you know, just the other week, they uh, finally decided on the final budget that's going to be in Horizon Europe. Um, so, for example, the final deadlines of these programs, some of these things are still uncertain. We even heard about the European Accelerator that it's going to be open calls four times a year, as it used to be within Horizon 2020. But even this isn't sure yet. So we still hope for final decisions or final papers we can get. Okay, if there aren't any more if there aren't any more questions about the funding opportunities, I mean you can come back to us later, as we said before. We want to tell you a little bit about international partnerships because this is something we can offer for you as well. If you want to, um, if you're already situated in, in our local market, but you want to thinking about going international, 
Um, we offer different services and one of them is called Brokerage Event. I'm going to share a small video about this again. So you can get an interaction about what we are talking about, an impression about. Business speed dating, B2B meetings, brokerage events. You're on mute model. So just some information about brokerage events in case you're not familiar with this. And I pointed out, uh, I made two examples about brokerage events, upcoming events, which might be interesting for you. The first one is uh, the ICT Spring. I'm going to think it's going to start today, organized by the Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Luxembourg. And it's not just the matchmaking events, they offer webinars as well, some discussion rounds and um, some other stuff, which might be interesting for you. Um, but as it's said in the film, there are much more events which might be interesting. Just go to the website and see which one is suitable for you. You can filter them with different topics and so ever. And I have to say, as the movie was produced uh, before Corona, uh, most of these events are taking place in a virtual base right now. So it's quite nice for us. You don't have to travel to uh, this conference anymore or this fair trade. You can just check in. You can apply for it on the media. Uh, like you can go to the platform, register with a profile, have a look at the other participants, and then have a meeting uh, online with a special platform we are working with. The other brokerage event I would like to tell you a little bit more about is the WeGate Summit taking place, I guess, on the 5th or 6th, 10th December. I can see it right now. It's about women entrepreneurship. So if you're interested in connecting with other female entrepreneurs within Europe, have a look at the website. You can register for free at the matchmaking and see if there are suitable business partners or technology partners for you as well. Um, yeah, that's it, I guess. Okay, there's a list about uh, upcoming events as well, but you can go to the website, as we said before. The second opportunity we have within our um, Enterprise Europe network within this um, pillar about international partnerships is company missions. That's where we, or together with partners from our regions, organize company missions to different destinations all over the world. So uh, we take some of the companies with a special interest, bring them to a special country, and it's like a first market entry and um, could be interesting for you as well because it's like easy handed. We've got some examples for this as well. The first one is called uh, Start Alliance, Berlin Partner. Our host organization is one of the founding partners from the Start Alliance. It's a business network from startup hubs, but it's like the cities that are partner 
um, in the Start Alliance program. So you can see it's not just Berlin, it's New York City, it's London, it's Vienna, it's Tel Aviv, it's also Shanghai. Depends on where you would like to go. And we've got outbound programs. That means we bring the startups from Berlin to one of these destinations and they can check out if this is a suitable market for them. It's like a really short accelerator program. It depends. Sometimes it's five days, sometimes it's 10 days. You get to know a lot about the city, the market entry within, I don't know, the states. Um, you, you get to meet first potential customers or even network partners and whatsoever. And sometimes startups from all of these destinations come to Berlin and uh, try out the German market for this. Right now, there aren't any company missions going on because of Corona. So you have to have a look, take a look at the website to see if there are some um, company missions, if they will take place within next year. Again, we hope so. You can also follow them on LinkedIn to get the latest information. Uh, the second uh, project I would like to tell you a little bit more about just started this summer. It's the Cooperation Network Berlin and China. It's especially targeting um, green tech, usability, and design industries. The International Design Center Berlin and Sourcebook, they are the partners from this project. They are also planning to go international or go to China within next year. But um, as you know, they do not have any um, fixed date yet. But it's interesting if you are um, going for the Chinese market as well, because they offer some events and some other information for a market entry in China as well. Um, I guess the next one, I do not have to tell you a lot about this, is uh, from the SEBB. Mario can probably tell you a little bit more about this. First of all, they've got this deep tech hub. It's also an international project and um, it serves, it's not going to China as the one before, but they're targeting Poland and Russia. They are focusing on um, those areas you can see at the bottom, like logistics, mobility, smart city, FinTech, eHealth, IoT, and also cybersecurity. So if you are working in one of these topics and you're deciding to go uh, and you would like to enter Polish market or Russian market, um, it would be like a really good contact point. Katja is the person in charge within the SEBB. And the next project is also from the SEBB. It's called Point Out. Um, and it brings the IT industry from Berlin and I guess also Brandenburg um, to the US, especially the East and West Coast of the USA. They are planning on having a company mission next year, a business delegation. I guess they are going to do a digital as well. Magena is project leader, Magena from the SEBB. But um, if this might be interesting for you, you can check out at the end of January, they are going to have a networking event called Berlin Meets USA, Cybersecurity, Big Concern and Great Business Opportunity, which might be interesting for you as well. Okay, so this is all about the company missions we have. And Robin is going to tell you a little bit more about one of our last services we have. And it's our huge database. Exactly. Um, first off, actually, um, I saw there was one more or two, actually, two questions in the chat. Um, so first one is, will the slides be available for us afterwards? So um, for us, it's no problem. Uh, Mario, um, maybe you can tell us like what's the best procedure here whether you uh, make it available for download or send it via email but for us that's all right and yeah yeah <clears throat> I, I, I will i will ask you later about yeah. That. Okay. um yeah and the second question is um if a startup applies to this last call 15th december in horizon 2020 with the startup uh, still be eligible for other EU grants from the Horizon Europe budget? Um, yes, but um, you cannot fund the same project um, using different um, mechanisms. So you couldn't like um, apply to this. I think this refers to the um, DigiFed call with the deadline on December 15th. Um, you could use the grant, but then you couldn't fund the same, um, the, the exact same project uh, through another program. So but you could apply with another program, uh, with another um, product, I mean. All right. So, um, yeah, as Mona already um, hinted at, we have the Partnership Opportunities Database in the Enterprise Europe Network. So if you're interested in entering new markets or um, advancing the development of a technology and need a partner for that, 
um, or if you um, want to apply for one of these grant calls that we um, showed you earlier on um, and you need partners from across Europe, then we have this, um, it's called POD, Partnership Opportunities Database. Um, we also um, put the link in here. Um, yeah, and you can just scroll through the listings and see um, whether there are interesting partners that you would like to get in touch with. And you yourself, if you, um, for example, want to apply for one of these grant calls or you have a certain technology, but you need a very uh, specific partner um, to advance it further, then we can also create a profile for you, um, which then is going to be um, viewable in the database and all the Enterprise Europe network partners from across the globe, um, as we mentioned earlier on, can then um, look into the database and see whether or not they have the right partner um, that you need. And then um, as a last element, uh, we would like to um, hint at the Enterprise Europe network Berlin Brandenburg um, regional um, website. Um, where we have fun, uh, funding overview and events. So the funding overview is called the further news. It's a um, database where um, you can filter um, for the um, sector that you're active in. And then um, you can find a lot of programs on the European level, but also as you can see here on um, local level in Berlin and on national level um, that are interesting for you. And the events page, um, this one, um, yeah, you can also check it out um, to find interesting events on European level um, yeah, that are happening. And the final message from Mona. Yes, I would like to take the opportunity because uh, one of my colleagues has to leave, unfortunately. Um, so we are looking for a new innovation manager within our cluster, taking care of uh, the topic of artificial and uh, intelligence. So if you're working there and perhaps you are looking for a job or you know somebody who's looking for a job within this area, have a look at our website at berlin-partner.de and uh, you can find all the information there, but it's a great team. I can really um, just say it's great to work there. So um, yeah, that's it. I, I wanted to take the opportunity. We are looking for uh, good applications and uh, thanks for, for listening to us. Um, now we've got uh, some more time. I saw it popping up. You've got any more questions, feel free to do so, or you can reach out to us later on. You can see our contacts over there. And um, yeah, thanks for joining us today. Thank you also from my side. Thank you very much, Mona and Robin. Um, so I think we can switch back to the table mode. And if people have uh, questions, uh, specific questions to you, they can just uh, double click on your table on the upper left corner where the uh, Berlin Partner logo is and then talk directly with you. All right. Perfect. Okay. Cool. See you later. Okay, See you soon.